What is going on, everybody? Today we are opening up a bundle from Karlov Manor. Uh, I'm not going to say this first word because YouTube robot algorithms are not in love with it. So thank you, Wizards, for putting a name together that uh, flags all of our content. It has been fun to watch <laughs> other content creators um, make content for this set uh, without using this name. Um, but I'm very excited to open this up. The set is really cool. It is very um, complicated. So there's a lot of Ravnica history and there's a lot of Ravnica um, rules and abilities that kind of make a return, but also some new abilities and some new words for old abilities. Ultimately, there was a lot of um, confusion. We watched the LLRR loading ready run pre-pre-release judge video before our pre-release weekend at our apartment and confusion abound. There was, there's a lot to remember in this set. Um, the setting is cool. Karlov Manor is a, a nice little peak at a very small portion of Ravnica, but um, ultimately I don't know that it lives up to the reputation that uh, people have with Ravnica sets. And I don't know if it was necessarily supposed to. I think this was kind of like a bottle episode. If you're a fan of television, um, this is a the Magic's version of a bottle episode. It basically takes place around a very particular niche, small story and takes place on Ravnica. And it's fun. It brings little twinkles of the guilds and brings some returning characters um, into the limelight and kills one of people's favorite characters. So that's super interesting. Um, but ultimately, I think this set is going to have a fairly decent impact on standard current it's current standard. It's going to have a lot of impact on commander, which we can pretty much say for every set. Right now, they're designing so heavily towards um, Commander. Uh, but there's also some really cool reprints of staples from older formats, eternal formats. Um, there's uh, there's Lightning Helix in this set, which is really cool. Uh, Murder's back, which is great. Uh, but let's open up this bundle and see what we get. So... If this is your first fat pack or bundle opening, basically this is a mini collection Kickstarter. Um, this is the first set with the new booster packs. This These now have play boosters, which is kind of like a merge between draft boosters and set boosters. Set boosters were for those looking to add to their collection and, and draft boosters were for those that were looking to play limited formats of magic and the introduction of set boosters kind of cannibalized their audience for draft boosters. People weren't buying them. Um, so they decided to, instead of kill draft boosters, which would devastate an entire audience of magic players, they decided to combine the two and make a booster pack that has a little bit more chance to add cool things to your collection while also maintaining integrity for limited and draft environments. Um, so bundles generally include a handful of packs. Now we get nine. So um, play boosters are 14 cards, 14 playables. Uh, you get some lands. This one has 15 traditional foil and 15 regular basic. Um, the image on here looks like we're going to get full art lands. Which, correct me if I'm wrong, is the first time they've ever done that. Normally you get the boring basic lands. Um, but I'm very excited at the possibility that bundles are now going to include the full art lands. Because that makes buying these even more um ludicrous for myself 
specifically. Um, there's a bunch of things that keep me coming back to bundles as a product. Um, one of them is the oversized spin down dice. Another one is the card boxes. Um, and the most relevant one is the was the set booster packs, which were fun to open a lot more fun than draft boosters. Uh, now that we have the play boosters, we'll have to see if that maintains its um, excitement. But if there's full art lands in here, because we are collectors, um, wait, this side, collectors of full art lands, um, that would be amazing. That means I don't have to hunt down, you know, a full set of full art lands for each of these new magic sets that come out um i could just buy the bundle which i'm was most likely going to buy already so that's really really cool and then we get um one art alt art traditional foil uh rare which in this bundle is an axbane ferox which i think is a really cool card it has death touch and haste i believe it's kind of like baby questing beast uh which i like uh it's on my list of cards to hunt down so i'm super stoked to open this up uh let's just crack it open and see what we get oh that's a bummer i've never had a bundle or a tear not work like that what is happening Let me see if I can grab this end. Oh. 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 There we go. What a mess. We've got the set symbol here, which is like a detective's badge from um, Ravnica. Open this up. And we've got a cool box. We get a, an intro card, uh, spoilers, story spoilers there. Um, Tesa has been, oh, at 216. Wait, let me. So they've been doing a lot of these like cool mystery things as the lead up to um, this set dropping. Because this set is all about solving a murder or or being a detective. They've done a lot of cool mystery things. This one says, at 216, you can see through the diabolical scheme. Reach out to your connections. Continue your investigation. RavnicaDetectiveAgency.com At 216. Do we think that's a time? Or do we think that that's a date? It's formatted like a time. Uh, but that's interesting. Also, uh, R.I.P. Tesa. Miss Karlov, if you're nasty, she's uh, dusted. So we've got this cool box. It's definitely not my favorite design. It's just kind of like boring character posters. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Got some Krenko, some Massacre Girl, some Arati, just some guild, uh, popular guild names. So I don't love that, but it's not the worst. Let me put this to the side. And then we've got inside here, we've got a bunch of punch outs, which are sort of okay. Um, they're better than the ones that come in the packs or in the um, pre-release kits, but they're not much better. You never know what to use these giant ones for. Um, we've got some unlock, which I'm assuming is for the cases. We've got some minus one, minus one counters, some stun counters, some plus one, plus ones. 
Yeah, I don't really keep these. I don't normally. They're usually tossed out pretty quickly. And unfortunately, it looks like we're also not getting the inserts anymore. Um, you used to get one of these, which was like an insert to this box. And I really love having these around. Like I use these for deck building. There's a ton of them around my office and I put stacks of cards in here. I build decks in here. I've got, you know, collective collection things marked in there. Um, and it's not included anymore. So that's a bummer. Um, I hope they change that. We've got our collectible dice here, which here, I'll put it on something a little bit easier to see. So we've got a large oversized spin down with the set symbol on it. This one's kind of like orangish with blue text on it. It's kind of hideous. I'm not going to lie. Um, not the biggest fan of that die. But we'll see. It kind of looks cool in the light. Here, let me... Um, it kind of looks cool in the light. Don't mind my chipped fingernails. But ultimately, I think they've done way better with uh, themed dye before. Not the biggest fan, but what can you do? And then here we've got our, should be our promo foil. Oh my God, it does look like we're getting full art lands. That's so cool. Okay. That's great because it just means I, I might never have to buy single lands again. So here we've got our Axebane Ferox. In an alt art, this is usually the only place you're able to get these arts. Uh, it has a special bundle moniker on the bottom. It has Ward Collect Evidence 4, and it's a 4-4 Death Touch Haste creature. That's pretty cool. And then, yeah, wow. Okay. Oh, no, we, got, we only get one full set of full art lands, and then we get two of each or one of each basic land which is okay i don't mind that i only need the full the one full set anyway look how gorgeous these are these are some of the coolest and most like nondescript at the same time um full art lands that they've done in a long time and surprisingly, like, not a huge Pringle action going on, which is which is really neat. I think that there's a lot of disdain for foils in general, rightfully so. I think if Wizards of the Coast really wanted the foils to matter that much, they would make them better. Uh, but as of yet, they do not. Um, yeah, that's really cool. I like the fact that we've got an instant collection of all five full art lands. We won't have to worry about, um, hunting them down or buying them as singles. Usually I have to buy, um, Usually I have to buy them as singles if I don't open them in packs because I don't honest I honestly don't purchase a lot of packs in general. I purchase packs to play at the start of um when a set kicks off, and then I purchase packs or I purchase singles of cards that I didn't open and I'm interested in either building a deck around or substituting into a deck that I've already built. Um, so it, when I hunt full art lands like these, generally I have to 
do my pre-release, um, open my bundle, and then take inventory and whatever I don't have yet, I have to hunt, then hunt down. What I really need is more frames for my lands. I have some Ben makes cool stuff, lands in a frame, and then I have my other frame um, with a bunch of full arts that you can see on my wall behind me. Um, does that mean this one is also just one set of non-foil? Yeah, so you get one set of foil, one set of non-foil. Uh, very cool, I like that. And then you get the basic lands. If they keep doing this, that's a whole whole other reason for me to be buying bundles. Um, I'm very excited about that. So we're going to try to keep things organized as we open these, but included used to do eight set boosters. Now we have nine play boosters. And so you get a, a couple sets of lands. You get a promo foil rare. That's the same in every bundle. It's not a surprise. Like it's listed on the back of the box. You get a card box. You get a bunch of tokens that are pretty much garbage. You get a oversized spin down dice, which um, I really like. I use for all my at home play is I just grab one of the oversized spin down dice that I have. And then you get a bunch of booster packs that you can then open. It's kind of like kickstarting your collection of a new set and that's kind of why I like I'm gonna move this little guy it's kind of why I like getting bundles is you kind of get a little bit of everything um yeah that's my that's my pitch so we're gonna open our first pack uh this first one I might do in the wrong order oh actually it looks like this is a common up front I'm still getting used to the new order of these packs, so please bear with me. Uh, Defenestrated Phantom is cool. Rift Burst Hellion. Shock. Love a good shock rerun. Unscrupulous Agent. This card did work for me in the pre-release. I had three of these in my deck. Um, and being able to flash make tokens copies of this by exiling i had a tesa or a, a kaya planeswalker as well that let me copy things from my graveyard um so i just like exiled this and made people discard their hand or their cards it was good fun for me shady informant auspicious arrival hedge whisper i love this guy so i'm a big fan of lands i'm a big fan of ramp um, and I love a good land creature. So Hedge Whisperer was on my list of like cards I really wanted to hunt down because this guy for four mana makes a land, a five, five green plant boar creature with haste as long as Hedge Whis Whisperer remains tapped. It's still a land and you can choose to not untap him um, when you start your turn. Uh, then we get a cool Alt Art, this is Insidious Roots. This is a card I really, really love. Creature tokens you control have tap to add one mana of any color. Whenever one or more creature cards leaves your graveyard, create an 01 green plant creature token, then put a 1 1 counter on each plant you control. So this is really awesome. Um, I'm putting that straight into a deck. We get Cornered Crook, Flotsam, and Jetsam. So a nice little mill and then mill yourself or mill your opponents. Connecting the dots is our rare. One and a red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control attacks, exile the top card of your library face down. Pay one and a red, discard your hand, sacrifice connecting dots, put all cards exiled with connecting dots into their owner's hands. That's pretty cool. So you build up the secondary hand then you can sacrifice connecting the dots and put all these cards back into your hand. Very, very cool card. And then we get a foil version of Macabre Reconstruction. 
This one did good work for me yesterday as well, bringing some creatures back from your graveyard to your hand. And then we get a full art island and some tokens. A poison. Love the return of poison. Case solved, suspected, unlock. The unlock part, I'm still confused by. I haven't seen a card that mentions it. I might just be missing the plot. Um, but it sticks out to me. A little sip. I talked a lot yesterday, so my voice is a little rough. Uh, pack number two. Let's do it. There are extra... Actually, let me see if it says on here what the... Includes a combination of one to four cards of rarity, rare or higher. Three to six uncommon, six to nine common and one land. One card of any rarity is a traditional foil borderless. Traditional foil land replaces a land in 20% of boosters. A list card is included in 12% of play boosters. So you get a little bit of a mix uh, of stuff to open. Our first card in pack two is the Sanguine Savior, which was an all right card for me yesterday. Snarling Gorehound. This is a great uh, turn one play. Slime Against Humanity. Novice Inspector. Bubble Smuggler. My favorite name for a card in this set. Fairy Snoop. The Chase is on. Our first uncommon is a Killer Among Us. Then the case of the Gorgon's Kiss and our rare... Oh, nope. I'm still getting used to this order. Our third uncommon is a Polygraph Orb and our rare is a Reenact the Crime. One blue, blue, blue. Instant. Exile target non-land card in a graveyard that was put there from anywhere this turn. Copy it. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. So you just get to bring something back almost immediately. And then our alt art is Officious Interrogation, which is a rare, which is great. And then a Shady Informant for our foil, and we get a Forest and a Thopter token. Nice. Two rares in that pack. That's nice. I like that. All right. Reasonable Doubt. We start off this pack with some Reasonable Doubt. Felonous Rage. Good combat trick there. Repeat Offender. This Okay, this card I wanted to be better for me in the pre-release weekend, but it wasn't. This guy is cool. Tunnel Tipster. Um, cares about face down cards entering the battlefield. It keeps growing. It's also a Mana Dork. It's pretty good. Make your move. This one did good work for me. Dog Walker. Pretty cool. Uh, you want to disguise it so that you can turn it face up and make a bunch of dogs. It has Vigilance, which is great. Thinking Cap. Ooh, Aftermath Analyst. I love this card. Uh, when it ETBs, mill three cards, and then you can sacrifice it and return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped, which is very cool. Uh, convenient Target. And we got Flourishing Bloomkin. Okay, so my um, brother played this card. And it's actually kind of beast. Uh, it gets plus one, plus one for each forest you control. And then when it is turned face up, you can search your library for up to two forests and reveal them. Put one of them into your hand and the other onto the battlefield tapped. And it, so it just gets bigger every time you play a forest. Pretty cool. Fae Flight is up next. That one's cool. Our rare is Door Keeper Thrall. It is a flash flying creature. The artifacts and creature creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. So it's a mute effect. That's pretty rough. Uh, Bullrock Clan Basher is our foil. And we got a foil land. 
and an art token. Sick. That was pretty cool. I don't play a lot of white, so anytime you open a white rare, I'm just kind of like, eh. eh. I just turn into Polly from Sopranos. Eh. All right. Pack number four. One, two, three, four. Yep. Pack number four. They went that way is our first card. Search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield. Tap, then shuffle and investigate. Pretty good. Seasoned consultant. Granite witness. Red herring. Love this card. Attacks each combat if able, and then you can sack it for to draw a card. It's pretty funny. Not a good card, but it's fun. Uh, toxic analysis. This is a fun little um combat trick works really well uh pick your poison good removal unauthorized exit knife case of the trampled garden it's pretty good and our rare nope not yet Curious Inquiry, and our rare, nope, not yet. Torch the Witness, and our rare, ooh. We got a Tristani Three Whispers. Green, Selesnia, or and white for a 4-4 four, four Dryad. One in a green, target creature gains death touch until end of turn. A Selesnia... A target creature gains vigilance until end of turn, or two in a white target creature gains double strike until end of turn. I mean, it's not very good, is it? I don't think so. Uh, Vengeful Creeper is next. It is a plant elemental. This is our foil. And we get a normal swamp and a human token. All right, pack number five. Over the... This is our halfway mark. Halfway mark. Let's do this. Agency Coroner. I didn't see this card all weekend. Uh, Rubble Belt Maverick. Griff Not Tracker. Jaded Analyst. Sanguine Survivor. A Snarling Gorehound. The chase is on. Our first uncommon is Curious Inquiry. Torch the Witness. Karlov Watchdog. Dope. And our rare is a Lush Portico. Forest, the Selesnia Dual Land. These du new dual lands are pretty good. Um, they have both land types in the type line, which is great if you've got fetches. Um, they surveil one, which is also great. Uh, the only downside is that they come in tap, no matter what. Uh, but that's not bad. Pretty cool. Then we get, ooh, an Assassin's Trophy. We got double rares. Assassin's Trophy is hype. I'm going to put that down there. Uh, Basili Basilica Stalker is our foil. And we get a full art mountain and a clue token. I like how many clue tokens they've made. Uh, for this set. I've seen probably like four or five now. Different ones. It's like food with the Lord of the Rings set. There was just tons of different food. All right. Pack six. Seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Pack six. Let's go. We've got a granite witness. A red herring. Unscrupulous agent. Airtight alibi. Museum Night Watch, Fairy Snoop, Fanatical Strength. Our first uncommon is Gleaming Gear Drake. Call a Surprise Witness, Undercity Eliminator, and our rare is another Doorkeeper Thrall. And then we get an Audience with Tristani, a second rare. 
create an O1 green plant creature token, then draw cards equal to the number of differently named creature tokens you control. Kind of cool. We get a foil pick your poison, a foil basic mountain, and a bat token. Oh, that's a cool bat token. All right. Pack seven. We're just blaring through these. This is going to be our shortest bundle video ever. These don't feel too bad to open in comparison to like set boosters. I had a lot of fun opening our pre-release kits yesterday. Um, and opening this is, seems pretty fun. Uh, we've got a Maverick, a Griffnot Tracker, another Bubble Smuggler, another Sanguine Savior, an Agency Coroner, Thinking Cap, Murder, such good art. Case File Auditor, our first uncommon. Leering Onlooker is our second uncommon. No More Lies is our third. Hard Hitting Question is our fourth. And our rare is Coveted Falcon. One blue blue for a 1-4 bird flying. When it attacks, gain control of target permanent you own but don't control. And then you can disguise it. When Coveted Falcon is turned face up, target opponent gains control of any number of target permanents you control. Draw a card for each one they gained control of this way. Damn. So you can give your opponent all of your car your board, draw a bunch of cards, and then slowly take it all back. That's kind of neat. And then our foil is a museum night watch. And we get a full art planes and an art card from Kai Carpenter, 10th District Hero. I need to spend more time on the art cards. Really show them off in these videos. They're so good. Besides a few AI hiccups, um, the art in Magic the Gathering is always just astounding. Uh, Benthic Criminologist this is our second to last pack, folks. Innocent Bystander, Repeat Offender, Nervous Gardener, Due Diligence, Shady Informant, Auspicious Arrival, First Uncommon is Agency Outfitter, Soul Search, Perimeter Enforcer, our first rare slot is, ooh, another Aftermath at Analyst, like that, and we get a Doppelgang, XXX, Green Blue for a Sorcery. For each of X target permanents, create X tokens that are copies of that permanent. So if you wanted to copy two things and make two copies of them, you would have to pay two, four, six, green, blue. You'd have to pay six green, blue. So eight mana to make two copies of two things. That's pretty cool. Or you can make one copy of one thing for five mana. That seems a little crazy, but uh, fun nonetheless. And our foil is a lumbering laundry. I've never seen this card either. Five colorless for a four five golem. Two mana until end of turn, you may look at face down creatures you don't control any time. And then you could disguise it for five. Jeez, okay. We get a planes and a clue token. All right, last pack. We need a Massacre Girl or something, some big swing out of this one. We start off with a cold case cracker. Not that kind of cracker, like a safe cracker. Person of interest, magnifying glass. Oh, Loxodon eavesdropper. Look at this big elephant detective. And the flavor text says he's all ears. Because he's just got huge ears. Uh, Hazda Vigilante. Projector Inspector. Fun name. 
Unauthorized Exit. Slimy Dole Leech. This actually did quite a bit of work for me in my pre-release deck too. Caught Red-Handed. Sudden Setback. And our first rare slot is a Dual Land. Commercial District. Um, pretty cool. And then we get another Axbane Ferox. Nice. I love that for us. And a Foil Cold Case Cracker. Mountain and a Clue. Sick. Well, we got one Mythic. Which is not bad. Here, let me go to Desk. Focus. Doppelgang is cool. Assassin's Trophy is dope. Officious Interrogation. I'm stoked for Insidious Roots. That's a great get. The fact that we got two of those white rares, the Thralls, kind of annoying but uh what can you do we got new doggo which is great oh am i just pulling out rares i guess i should i guess i should go back and grab this one even though i passed it over like it was nothing Um, yeah, I think one of the things that makes this set feel weird is that, um, I'm not incredibly excited for a lot of it, but I am more excited than normal for a very small portion of it. So it's kind of got this weird middle feeling where I'm not necessarily incredibly excited to play. Karlov Manor. Karlov Manor. I need to enunciate better. Um, but I am excited to collect a handful of the cards that are in this set. Um, so that always makes it a lot of fun. As long as you find your fun. And you can have fun. Um, then I think... It's worth it. I'm very excited for these aftermath, aftermath analysts. I think that's pretty sick. Even though I think we ordered them as singles already, um, I'm not gonna count this X Bane Ferox because that was free. And then we got, what, two dual lands? One. Two. Yeah, two dual lands. That's not bad. I mean, we opened nine packs. And we got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen rares or mythics. Only one mythic, actually, but... So 12 rares and one mythic? That's not bad. I liked that there was a couple of packs in there that were double rares. It made me feel... Um, like I was opening something really cool, and I think that's the point. There's not a lot of legendary creatures in this set, I noticed yesterday, when we were opening stuff. Um, there's like one card for each of the guild masters. Um, but yeah, I think that was really fun. I think that some of the changes that they've made to the play boosters, the changes that they've made to the bundle 
basically kind of tracks like this. I like, love actually, that they've managed to put um, a set of full art lands into the bundle. Um, I don't like that they did not include the insert for the box. I think that's silly. Um, but yeah, ultimately we got a couple of chase cards. Assassin's Trophy for sure. Um, Axebane Ferox, which we were going to get anyway with the box. We got some, the cool alt art Insidious Roots. Um, I think this is just gorgeous. I'm not a huge fan of this frame, uh, but this art is so colorful and druidic that I'm just a big fan of it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what, that's what there is. I am super stoked to keep playing this set. I'd like to boot up arena a little bit more and play more magic. Um, I really need to start earning some standard cards so that I can keep playing, um, often, but I'm also willing to like set aside a little bit of a budget monthly for gems if I want to play limited events or anything like that. So if you're up for it and you like playing on arena, hit me up. I would love to add you to my friends list. We could jam some games. Um, I might do like an open spell table stream as well every now and then. Um, so if you're interested in, in joining for that, I would love that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much uh, for hanging out with me today. I know we've only been uh, doing this for a little while, but I wanted to just have some fun and open some magic cards and we got some pretty decent stuff out of it. And we got to ch check out the new booster packs, the new booster format. Um, again, not super in love with the art on this box or the fact that they took out the insert, but everything else. Uh, I liked opening the packs. They were a lot of fun. There was some drama. There was some suspense. Um, yeah, I just wish I saw more list cards or had a probability for list cards. I think that those are always really exciting as a magic collector and player uh, to open. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you being here. I hope that you have an amazing rest of your day. I'm going to take a walk and enjoy some of this weather. And I hope you're kind to yourself and you have a great time. Um, yeah, I hope you eat something delicious. I hope you are told how wonderful you are. I hope that you see a cute dog. Don't approach people's dogs, uh, but I hope you see one. Just a visual pleasantry. Um, yeah, and I hope you're getting love in the language that you like to receive love. And I will chat at you guys uh, soon. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash at Erp. Um, yeah, there's a sealed deck build on there. I'm going to put this up there uh, shortly. I uh, would love to see you. Thank you so much.